Good day, everybody. I hope you're doing really well. This is Tracy Brown, your somatic dietitian and attuning expert. And today and this whole week, we're going to talk about the... We all know about it. We all know how important compassion is for ourselves and others. But we're going to dive into it a little bit more deeply with some tools this week. And... Um, also give you some updates about the peaceful eating eating community i'm really really hoping and i got i know i keep promising it's coming but like we're this, this close i mean i worked on it this weekend um so i'm really hoping and i'm really excited about it. i'm gonna do a little video screen capture of it this week um on an off day and just to talk about it and what's what's inside so i'm real excited yay all right so i do want to say happy birthday do i know there's a um, at least I know one person whose birthday is today who is a regular watcher, so I just want to say happy birthday. If I've missed anybody's birthdays that happened this weekend, happy birthday to you. And um, let's get started. Body and food compassion. The simplest way to kind of go about this statement is that um, we all have needs. And no matter how much the culture or our environments and, you know, personally, um, outside of our environments, but people we're exposed to, or just the noise we hear out in the world, they're going to try to tell you what you need. That's just it. You know, that that's just the um, unfortunate nature of um, what diet, diet culture is produced and health culture is produced, is that you can't trust yourself. So other people outside of us, probably for decades, have tried to tell you what you need or what you don't need. And the role of compassion in this problem is this, is that nobody, not me, not anybody else, can be inside of you and what your needs are for food, water, sleep, oxygen, rest, and um, um, shelter. Nobody can meet those needs exactly the way you can. And when we're willing to have compassion for, you don't have to love your body, but have compassion for this body, no matter what its current form looks like, this body has needs. And I don't have to like it, but it's the truth. And being able to wield that, not as a weapon, but as like um, just this fundamental knowing that level of compassion says like no matter what anybody else says I know what my needs are and that is like the way we build compassion from I think the inside out about honoring our needs that helps us not put our needs off when we know we're gonna have a busy day when we know that putting our needs off gives us a headache when we know putting our needs off doesn't um, match maybe the health situation we're in it's like we may not like the situation we're in with our bodies but that doesn't mean that our bodies deserve um, being disregarded and that's what real compassion is and I also want to talk about from the body perspective today and I and I welcome any comments anything we're talking about here um, if you're struggling with co with compassion towards just who and how you are, I highly recommend you go to Christian Neff's website, website, um, Kristen Neff, and take the self I put those in the intuitive eating support group a couple weeks ago, her links, but go ahead and look for those again. Um, just Google her name because N-E-F-F, -F, just Google her name because it's really important to have a sense of when we don't have compassion, what our lives are going to look like. Um, and just to boil it down very simply, it's suffering. And we don't have to do that. So when I say about body, I was thinking actually on the car ride back home to talk about this today. For example, with body change. You know, we, if you're a human, you've gone through some level of body change in your either preteen or te teen years. You've gone through puberty. And we think, like, oh, okay, I went through that phase. And now I'm never supposed to weigh more again. And that's it. And it's like, well every I think life season and transition is going to come with some change can we have compassion for that you know so I, th I, I see you know women in their 
50s, 60s, and for example, and going through those midlife changes. And it's as if it's like this earthquake of why are these things happening? It was, well, well, why did puberty happen? We are going to change. Can we have compassion for these bodies that are just following the instructions of whatever time in life it is for that body? No, I'm not saying that our um, choices don't impact that some. Yeah, so of course, if your body's needing a certain more or certain nutrients, we might have worse or more symptoms than we could. But in general, we're going to go through changes anyway. And it's almost like, you know, of course this is happening. If you are somebody who um, your eating um, issues started when you were quite young and your body's changed quite a bit and it's feeling like, oh, I shouldn't be this way. Like my body shouldn't be this way. Is that true? You know, is that true? the compassion would lie in, you know what? I never got a chance to grow up into an adult body. I never got time and support to be able to like, oh, this is how my body maybe is supposed to be. It's just that, you know, I didn't get to grow up into it until your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And that could be true. And could we have compassion for that possibility? And then lastly, with bodies, is that, yeah, we're all going to probably because of the rough and tumble in life, whether it's from chronic dieting, from the things, an unfortunate you know, disease or condition that happen, like life happens, um, and it changes our body or it's functioning or how it looks or whatever, um, outside of maybe what ha- could or did or didn't happen from, from food restriction, is that stuff happens. Um, you know, I'll give a non-emotionally charged example. I have thumbnails that both of them are just jacked. <laughs> They're jacked up. They're bumpy and rigid, and they easily go numb and get sore. I've injured both of my thumbnail beds so badly through one through sports, actually one through um, a spider bite um, that destroyed nerve endings and the tissue and all that good stuff. So I have two thumbnails that don't look normal, <laughs> normal, and don't work quite right. And that's from the rough and tumble of life. And so I could hate them my entire life. And my daughter, every time she sees this left one especially, she's like, oh, mom, it's weird and gross and it feels weird. You know, it's like, yeah, it is different, huh? But this is a thumbnail I've got. And it still works pretty good. So, and I'm saying this because I know this isn't charged. This isn't the same thing as a body that's changed from something that's different from the cultural ideal. I know it's different. But there's a level of, like, compassion for, like, yeah, I've lived some life. And if your body is not what you thought it would have been, could have been, should be, you'd like it to be, there's a level of compassion for, you know, it would be easier. It would be easier if I had a different body size. Um, but the truth is, you know, I might still have issues with knowing what, you know, what my identity is, who I am, even if I was in a smaller body. You know, even if... Um, I was I could move around more in a way I wanted to. You know, even if I didn't have this insulin resistance, I might probably still have stuff negotiating and navigating relationships in life. So can we have compassion for like, you know, even if, you know, that circumstance. And can we say, well, there might be some things that are easier. It would be easier. It would be nicer if I felt better. And so we want to have compassion for that. And actually just be really curious. Is it true that I would never be uncomfortable? That I would never be sad? That I would never be sick? That I would never be mad? That I would never get disappointed? And the answer is probably no. So I hate for you to put all of your happiness in the wish basket of thinness. It's true. There might be some easier stuff. It's true. Really, really, really true. But that doesn't mean that you still can't have compassion for yourself and that your life can't be good. So, I hope today was helpful. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about compassion for ourselves and others who are dieting and we are not <laughs> or we're not actively. You know, even if we have thoughts, we're not actively doing anything. And I think that's a whole nother level of um, growth that we're all working through. So, thank you so much for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your your um, 
your love and your care and your interest. And if these videos were helpful for you, please let anybody else know about it that might be interested. And keep posted, keep posted, keep posted about um, the group. It's so close. I mean, I wish I could tell you how many little things I'm like, oh, I forgot to do this and oh, I forgot to do that uh, to make that run smoothly. And I'm just still sure there will be glitches when we finally say, okay, I'm pushing publish and we're done with this. Um, but I'm real excited. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to do, I think I've got some time to do it probably Thursday or Friday. Um, I will announce it like, hey, if y'all want to see what's inside of this and um, I'll kind of walk you through it a little bit. It's not going to be like a full on instructional of like how to use it. But uh, I just want you to see what's inside because I'm real excited and um, I want you to get excited about it as too. So, all right, Debbie, thank you so much. I'm glad that you needed this. Love to hear more. But anyway, for now for today, have a really great day. I want you to be thinking about compassion and what a tool it could be for you in your life around your food and body. Thank you so much and take care. Bye.